Hi friends, it's time for That's Life with Julie. And I don't know if you can hear it or not, but we're finally getting a thunderstorm rain here. So the rain is falling back here on my back deck. There was a little thunder roll there. And it's very apt that this is the weather outside because it really reflects the mood and really the tone of my discussion with you today. See, on Sunday, for some reason, well, I'll tell you the reason, uh, some friends and I discussed the price of gold, and I got to thinking about a class ring that I had from high school, oh, what, 10 years ago? Okay, maybe a few years before that. But I had this class ring, and it was gold, and I got to thinking, you know, gosh, that ring, I think gold was $300 an ounce, maybe $900 an ounce. It was expensive. And what if I could find that ring? And gosh, that might pay for my mother the bride dress, and that might pay for this, and I could maybe do that. So I got to looking yesterday and going through all sorts of jewelry, and I could not come up with that class ring. So it's kind of been bugging me. You know, I'm like, where can that be? And we've only moved probably mm, a dozen times over the years since I graduated from high school and my husband and I with transfers and such. So who knows where that silly ring is? But I was thinking about that gold and I found that I started thinking about the value of that gold and the worth of that gold. And then, okay, and this is when my husband says, I wish God would have put this light on your head that would start flashing, warning me that you're jumping from thought to thought. But then I, I remember this scene from the movie Schindler's List, and uh, many of you who saw that may recall this. It was at the very end of the movie, and Oscar Schindler has the Jews around him that he had worked you know, behind the scenes to pull them out of the concentration camps and to put them to work in factories that he owned as a German in order to save their life. And in that final scene he has the people and, and the war has ended and he looks around and he looks at everything and he's like I could have done more I could have done more and he he looks at his car and he's like I should have called I should have sold my car I could have saved I could have saved three five lives with that and everything that he looked at it had a dollar sign but it had a deeper meaning than a mere dollar sign the dollar translated into a saved life and that really struck me. I mean, that memory, you know, and I believe that's the Holy Spirit who brought that memory to mind. And then I thought about Amon Get, and he was the concentration camp of Plaskow. I may not have pronounced that quite right, but he was the commandant of that camp, and he was a horrifically evil man. And I googled his name, and what I came up with is... Um, this link to his daughter named Monica. And Monica, it wasn't until she was much older that she actually came to find out the truth about who her father was. And there is um, a documentary, it's called The Inheritance, and I highly recommend that you either purchase that or you review it. You can go to Amazon.com and you can rent it for seven days for $2.99. And you know how I'm always saying, tell me your story, and everyone has a story? Well, it's so true. And I'd never heard of Monica. And so I watched that documentary. And Monica, it's revealed more and more the reality of who her father truly was. She was a very little girl, three years old, and her father had been hung um, after the war for his crimes against humanity. But she had never been told that. Her mother had just simply said, your father fought in the war, and he died um, a hero, like all the other German men. But that wasn't true. And so it was so painful to watch this. And the reality that Monica went to see the movie Schindler's List when it came out. And as she's watching it, she, she said, in the, she says in the documentary, imagine watching that movie and imagine that you are seeing who your father is revealed on that screen. Imagine the emotions and the shame and just the burden that comes with that. And in the documentary, she meets with a woman who had at one time been chosen by Amon Get to be a servant, a slave within his house. And she was brutally treated and she was a survivor and Monica requested to meet her and this dear woman agreed to do that and it's this amazing story of survival 
this amazing story of coming to a place of being able to live with not only your past, but the past of your parent, and how you had no control of that. And it really was, it was just very powerful, and it was unsettling to watch, to be quite frank. And what I got to thinking about was, see, Oscar Schindler was a um, friend, per se, of Amon Get. Uh, he would come into the camp and he would have dinner with Amon and this young woman who met eventually with the daughter of Amon uh, would see Oscar and he would privately say to her, he said to her on, on a couple of occasions, he whispered to her, you're going to be okay, you're going to be alright. You know the story in the Old Testament, you know the story in the Bible of how the Jews were slaves and servants and how they were freed, one day you will be free. And she had no idea how that could possibly happen. She had no idea what Oscar Schindler was up to. She didn't know that Oscar was working behind the scenes and doing everything that he could to save as many Jewish people as he could through the power that he had in his factory and his ability to work within what outwardly was just horrendous. And it, it was a horrendous period, but how he was able to save some. And here's what's amazing. At the end of Schindler's List, at the end of the movie, and this has been, what, 10, 15 years ago? Um, at the end of that, it said at the, at the creation of this film, at the, uh, at the end of this filming, there are 4,000 or fewer Jews in all of Poland. And this was just, you know, a decade ago, a little more than a decade ago. But there are over 6,000 descendants of Schindler's Jews who survived, who were born as a result of the work that he did. And one of the strongest quotes in that movie that was spoken to him, and they were, he was given a golden ring and by those Jewish workers, and engraved it said, whoever saves one saves and enti the entire world. And that really is true. And I was just thinking about the power of gold, you know, the ability to, the power of, the, of money and, and how money can be used for evil and money can be used for good. I was thinking about the power that we have in our lives to change this world. And we do change this world. We can save the entire world by saving one person. So where in your world today can you be an Oscar Schindler? Where in your world can you do good and maybe in the midst of what is very evil going on in and around you? How can you save someone today? Perhaps you can make a phone call. Perhaps you can send an email. Perhaps you can walk across the street and speak to your neighbor. Maybe you can forgive someone. Perhaps you are the keeper of truth that would actually free someone from a grip of unknowns. And oftentimes, so many times in our lives, what we imagine is even far worse than what is true. So I encourage you, if you are the keeper of secrets and you are able to speak truth to someone that can allow them to move forward in their life, save that life today because you have no idea, you have no idea down through the generations how that's gonna make an impact. So I know this is a little heavier than what I usually talk about, but that's life, right? Some days it just seems like it was all laughter and some days it's weighty things, weighty matters like this. So I encourage you to look at the documentary, The Inheritance. You can Google that. Like I said, you can go to Amazon.com and you can download it as a seven day rental. I encourage you to watch it. I encourage you to have your children watch it. I intend to have Patrick view it and to have Kristen view it. Very, very powerful. And I am asking you too to pray for the peace of Israel. They're in the news every day. I post on Facebook all the time about keep your eye on this, keep your eye on this. There are things at work, and trust me, there are governments and there are leaders who would like nothing more and have said, I mean publicly, that we want to wipe Israel off the face of the map. And they will do it if they are allowed to. So may we stand 
for those men, women, boys and girls, and the future generations. And pray for Israel and pray for her peace, for her safety. So I will see you guys later tomorrow. And in the meantime, just know that I enjoy doing this life with you.